demonstration of what I've made. While the KX2 has all of the functions built in, I wanted a way to quickly make changes without having to dig through menus and button combinations. The major reason that I wanted to make a control box is for sending pre-recorded messages in CW and SSB modes. Almost every time I pushed the message button, I would inadvertently tap the VFO and change my transmit frequency. Then I found some other settings that I would like to have one button push to activate. A couple of settings could take several minutes to set up if they get out of whack, and they can be done in less than a second with a simple push of a button. For CW, switches one through three send a pre-recorded CW message. Switch five changes the filter settings to a weak signal setting. The SSB mode has two pre-recorded message switches and settings to reset the AF gain, mic gain, and compression levels. The data setting changes a ton of things so you can hook the KX2 to a PC for digital modes. It would take quite some time to make those changes and this macro sets it up in a matter of seconds. Finally, all settings have an RF gain reduction macro to reduce the gain in the presence of strong signals. As programmed, it will reduce the AF gain by negative 3, negative 5, negative 10, negative 20, and negative 60 decibels without needing to use the settings menu. The Anderson power pole connectors allow you to use a power supply to power both the Arduino Nano and the radio if needed. Construction segment, the nuts and bolts. Shown here is my prototype that I built on a breadboard with the Arduino Uno. Prior to this point, I gathered the following materials for my build. If you build the exact model that I did, you'll need one Arduino Nano, five single pole, single throw momentary switches, one 3.5 millimeter TRS stereo jack, two 15 amp Anderson power poles, about a dozen jumper wires in assorted colors, plus two 10 gauge wires to loop power from one power pole to the other. I used Q-Dope as a temporary adhesive to hold a few things in place. I 3D printed a dual Anderson mount found at Thingiverse. You'll need an enclosure. I used a box that my guitar pickup was shipped in. 3D printing an enclosure would have been my choice, but I found this while looking for parts and I liked it. I gathered some of the parts to do a dry fit on the enclosure to make sure everything could be crammed in there. I cut the end of the enclosure to install the power poles and power for the Arduino board. Next, I used scotch tape, a permanent marker, and a pair of calipers to score where I wanted the switch holes to be. Carefully, I drilled each hole to the size of the panel mount switches. I used jumper wires with one end cut off to connect the switches to the Arduino Nano. I soldered the power and ground directly to the board. I also soldered three jumpers to the TRS jack for the serial communications to the KX2. The next step was to program the Arduino Nano and test functionality before gluing the jumper wires and placing the Arduino board into the enclosure. Everything is closed up, so alpha testing can commence. I printed a label, albeit incorrect and not final, to adhere to the front of the remote control box. Buttons four and five are swapped, and I added more functions after I tested the system live in the field during a POTA activation. This image is me alpha testing my design in real time during a real POTA activation at Kilo 2195 Reed Bingham State Park. I discovered that there were some timing issues that I needed to correct in the software, and I made a list of additional functions that I wanted to add. 
Last segment, the Arduino program. Now I will give a brief overview of the Arduino sketch used to translate button pushes into the appropriate serial commands for the Elecraft KX2. I did my absolute best to comment every line of the program with comments to explain what is happening and why so that anyone who wants to modify the program has the best chance at interpreting the program's function and flow. The header runs from line 1 to line 66. This gives basic information about who wrote the program, the license that the open source code is released under, some thoughts about what it does, and a few shout outs to folks who helped whether they knew it or not. Line 68 through 87 are macro definitions or preprocessor directives. These are constants used by the compiler to substitute human readable terms into values. Lines 69 through 75 are mapped to the Arduino Nano pin numbers. Lines 77 through 87 are Elecraft KX2 command sets. Information about the syntax and what these do can be found in the Manuals and Downloads page at Elecraft.com. Line 90 is where the external libraries are declared. I'm only using one external library. Software Serial allows the Arduino Nano to have more than one serial port, even though natively it only has one. I also chose this so that the PC serial connection would be separate from the KX2 serial connection. Lines 95 through 101 are global variable definitions. Variables in all caps are constants and technically not variable, but here they are. Each variable has been assigned one task. Using the same variable for different tasks is frowned upon in the programming world. These variables can be read or modified anywhere in the program, so be careful with them. If you plan to modify the program, add any new variables that you might need here. Lines 104 to 109 are function declarations. These give the programmer the ability to see what functions are available without taking up a lot of space to scroll through. You'll find the actual function definitions after void loop. These functions perform routine tasks and are called in the main program, and it keeps the setup and loop functions cleaner and easier to read. Lines 113 through 128 are the setup function definition. Setup is only run once when power is applied to the Arduino Nano board, and it is used to set up the Arduino for initial operation. Common tasks that only need to run once, such as setting I.O. pins as inputs or outputs, or starting the serial communications, happen here. Lines 130 through 165 are the loop function definition. Loop does just what its name suggests. It loops through lines of code until power is removed from the circuit. This is the main part of the show. All of the routine tasks, such as checking for changes on the inputs or sending commands to the KX2, happen here. If you want something to happen more than once, loop is where it is called from. Lines 167 through 243 are the user-defined functions and definitions. These are routine tasks. Check mode communicates with the KX2 to find out what mode is being used. FT8 data simply sends the KX2 commands to change settings for digital modes using a PC. RF gain control allows the user to quickly reduce the RF gain in the presence of a strong signal. Send message commands the KX2 to transmit pre-recorded messages in the CW and SSB modes. Weak SIG is taken straight from page 5 of the K3S programmer's reference manual. Field testing proved that this gives a huge boost to weak signals. The what switch function is used as a polling interrupt. At the beginning of loop, the switches are always checked to see if they are pushed. That's the 30,000 foot overview of the program. I tried to make it as easy as possible for rookie programs to be able to modify the program. If you plan on modifying the program, change one thing at the time in case something goes wrong so you can easily isolate what didn't work. 
While I don't have enough time to help everyone, I gladly offer my services if you want to make a change but need some assistance in making it work. Leave a comment or look me up using my call sign W1RCP.